Lightning. Now, in our examination of lightning, you can think of lightning as a really big Van de Graaff generator, which is the piece of physics equipment that may have shocked you in your physics class. Today, we're going to examine the physics of the natural phenomenon known as lightning, ways in which you can be safe, and hey, some dangerous stuff too. Now, when I was young, I grew up in central Illinois, which is very, very flat. One thing that allows you to do is see rain clouds coming from miles away. And I remember being very young, watching lightning, going, that is so cool, and wanting to find out how it actually occurs. That's probably my first experience where I thought that, hey, science can start helping me explain the world in a way that I just can't at the moment. A charge is a place where there is an imbalance of electrons. In other words, uh, you move the electrons around so that there aren't the same number of electrons as protons in a given region. A positive charge is a place where the electrons have been moved away, and so the protons outnumber the electrons, and therefore you have a positive charge. A negative charge is a place where electrons have been collected or congregated, resulting in more electrons than there are protons in a given region. Neutral is a place where there's about the same number of protons as electrons, and to be honest, this is 99.9% .9 of the time uh, you experience neutral conditions. The ground means to supply a path or a way for electrons to escape back to the earth, or the ground, and that's why they call it grounding. Metal is a very good material for doing this, and so wires often allow you to ground yourself. If you're in a building and you want to ground, a very convenient place to ground is a metal water tap, because that pipe is connected to another pipe, which eventually is buried. The process of grounding removes charges from objects or regions. And so, yeah, you can remove your charge by grounding yourself. And then finally, a shock is a sudden grounding of your electrons. And you shock your brother when you sh uh, shuffle your feet on a carpet. Then you walk up to him and you provide him with some spare electrons. So I've drawn a really quick schematic of a cloud and then the ground. Now if we stop and think about what a cloud is, what it's made up of, it's made up of billions and billions and billions and trillions even of little tiny little water droplets. And those water droplets are getting jostled around back and forth and they're bumping off of other water droplets and moving up and falling down. In essence, you have a little water droplet mosh pit. Now, every time that those water droplets touch each other, they have an opportunity to charge one another ever so slightly by friction. And if it works out that there becomes a place in which there's a lot of negative charge, like the bottom of a cloud, and a lot of positive charge, like the top of a cloud, you are charged by what's called polarization. You know what? There's about the same number of electrons and protons in the cloud but they've just moved to different regions. Well, if the bottom of the cloud has a lot of electrons, it can get a pretty strong negative charge. And in the process, that negative charge has, abil has the ability to chase all the electrons out of the ground nearby it. And you do this thing called inducing a positive charge in the ground. If you were to take the negative charge away, the electrons would return into the ground, but at the moment, they're being chased away. Do you see? Do you see a possibility here? Because opposites attract, so this negative charge is highly attracted to this positive charge, and under the right conditions, electrons will jump from the cloud down into the earth. We usually associate that with really bright flashes of light, followed by thunder. In reality, that's what lightning is. Lightning is the movement of massive numbers of electrons from the clouds to the earth, and that's also known as grounding. Now in Illinois, 
the land was very, very, very flat. And so this distance between where the cloud was and where the ground was remained pretty much the same if you were in the fields. But what happens if I put things like houses or trees or churches in the way? Does the roof of the house be just a little bit closer to the cloud than the earth is? Or is a tree just a little bit closer to the cloud than uh, the earth is and so becomes a very good conduit? Or, for example, if you have a church, the way that they build churches is with these very tall roofs called steeples. And it's very common that you put metal things on the top of these types of churches. And people have started to find out that if you put metal things way up high, um, lightning can strike your church and burn it to the ground. So after a bit of time, they figured out if I take a wire and run it all the way to the ground, these are called grounding wires. And basically, this is protection against lightning from burning down your building because the lightning will go through the wire as opposed to your building. But what happens if you are playing in a very large open field, like a golf course, with a very big metal stick in your hand, like a golf club? Suddenly, do you become a very convenient way in which electrons can return back to the Earth? Yeah, and that's why it's so dangerous to do things like play golf or baseball with an aluminum baseball bat when there's lightning around. It's also not a terribly good idea to hang out underneath trees during rainstorms. Now, I know it seems like a really good idea to stay dry, but in essence, are you basically around something very, very tall that could become a way in which electrons ground themselves? Yeah. The last activity that I want to talk about that's a little bit dangerous in lightning storms is swimming, because just by the nature of you swimming in a lake or a pool, you're in a very large flat place and you are the tallest thing there. And you become a very convenient place for electrons to discharge. Also, just by the sheer nature of swimming, is your skin wet? And so therefore, you become a very good conduit for electrons to flow through. Now, when I started, I suggested that uh, electrons can only go from clouds down to the Earth, but it really depends on the way in which the clouds are charged. If the clouds are charged so that there's a positive part on the bottom, that will induce a negative charge on the Earth, and lightning can go up. Or, lightning can move from one cloud to the next cloud, and you can see this sometimes in lightning storms. So we've been exploring what, it, what lightning means. Let's take a look at how Arc Attack, which is a rock band that plays with lightning, how they play with lightning at Maker's Fair 2010. So why isn't this man being electrocuted? Well, he's being struck by lightning time and time again, but this man is wearing a very special suit. It's metal, it's metal and it's flexible, and it allows the electrons to move on the outside of his body to the ground. And in essence, he is being protected by this metal mesh, allowing the electrons to move around the outside of them. Pretty cool, huh? Can you do this? Actually, you can. You can use the same trick in a lightning storm if you stay in your car. The metal of the car will act as a conductor of lightning down to the ground, and you will remain safe. 
there's some real dangers of static electricity, and the Brainiacs is kind of an English version of Mythbusters. Well, they were tackling the myth about whether cell phones will set off an explosion in a gasoline station. So they took this car uh, camper here, and they filled it with gasoline fumes. And then they set some mobile phones in there, and then tried setting off the camper. Well, it didn't work very well, but what else could cause a spark? going to blow up the petrol station. But we thought of something else that might. We've got a brain, the axe, some nylon clothes, a bucket, and a piece of wire. Why? Well, they do all these signs telling us about the dangers of using our mobile phones at petrol stations, but they don't say anything about the dangers of nylon clothes. You see, when synthetic fibers rub against our skin, we get a, a tingly sensation. That's caused by static. Static, of course, can generate a spark. If I'd like to interrupt and take a look at this list, and it's called the Triboelectric Series. Now on this list, you will see that nylon is right here, and the human body is right there. And you will create a charge if you rub nylon on the human body. But is that the best material that I could pick to rub on the human body in order to make a, a charge? And the answer is no, not really. There are other materials that are really good. If I look here, the human body, if I rub that with material called polyester, that will make even more of a charge. And the way in which you read a triboelectric series is basically you pick a material that's from the top that gives up electrons very, very easily, and you pair it with a material from the bottom that accepts electrons very easily. This process of transferring electrons from one material to the next is also known as a charge. Now, our Brainiac here is going to do some dancing in this bucket, in his nylon clothes, to generate that static. The bucket is here to stop him from being earthed, so that when he touches this fuse wire, the static will be transferred from him to the wire. Stop him from being earthed. It's the English way of saying grounded. Uh, down the wire and blow up the caravan. That, at least, is the theory. Here we go. Dance. Generate that static electricity. Feel the charge build in those synthetic fibers. Not being earth because of the bucket. That's what it's there for. We're going to go for it. Okay. Static is generating brain Here we go. I've got the fuse. Are you ready? This is it. So Richard brings up an interesting point here. When you go to put gasoline in your car, it might be a very good idea for you to ground yourself or touch the metal pump before you start putting gasoline into your car.